The first step in this project is going to be to build a basic user interface, which with this app is going to be a navigation stack so we can show our app's name across the top. A box in the middle asking users to import a picture. Below that, an intensity slider that'll affect how strongly we apply our core image filters, showing a value of zero to one. And then a sharing button to export the process image somewhere else outside our application. Now, we're not, not gonna put all those bits in in one go, just enough so you can see things fit together. That's our first target. Now, initially, we know the user won't have an image selected, and so we'll represent that with a state property that stores an optional image of what they have alongside that slider value. So I'll say here, at state private var, our processed image is an optional image. And below that, at state, private var, our filter intensity is 0.5. So halfway. And now we can modify the body property here to add the first version of our layout. I'm going to say as a VStack with a spacer at the top, then our image area still to come. Then another spacer, then at the bottom will be a HDAC containing uh, our intensity slider. So I'll say we have the text intensity and next that a slider with a value of dollar filter intensity like that below that h stack is another h stack this button here will be called change filter we'll add some code to change the filter later on like so and then we'll add a spacer in the h stack on the side of it will be a button saying just share the picture that'll be a share link later on We'll add a little bit of padding around our V stack here. I'll say we have a padding of dot horizontal and dot bottom, and then a navigation title of Insta filter. Now, of course, to make this navigation title work, we'll wrap the whole thing in navigation stack. So I'll say this whole V stack here is in a navigation stack like this. Boom. So we have two spaces here, one before image area, one after image area. So ensuring we get space above and below the image selection area, but also ensuring the controls at the bottom stay at the bottom. So it'll just fill the available space here with our image area plus spacing otherwise. Now in terms of what should go into this image area comment, it's gonna be one of two things. If we have an image already selected, then we should show it. Otherwise, we'll display a simple content unavailable view so users know the space isn't just accidentally blank. And so in place of that comment, we can write if let processed image, then display the processed image, making it resizable and making it scale to fit. Otherwise, that's where our content unavailable view comes in. I'm gonna say no picture as a title, System image I'm gonna use, let's do photo.badge.plus there. And for description, I'm gonna add the text of tap to import a photo. Firstly, I just love being able to unwrap optionals right here in our Swift UI layout. And it works particularly well here because only one of these two is visible, either the image or the content available view. Only one visible depending on if we have an image or not. Obviously, yes, uh, tapping won't do anything yet, but we'll add that shortly uh, once you add a, a photos picker. Now, as our code here was, I think, fairly easy, I wanna just briefly explore what it looks like to try and clean up our body code here. So we have lots of layout stuff, which is great, but also this button action happening here to change the filter. Uh, right here inside the code. And we're gonna add more to that later on. And so it's not gonna be a simple toggle a Boolean, ultimately it'll, it'll do more work. And so rather than putting it directly in line in the body code like this, I'd prefer to add a method to change the filter uh, called something like, you know, change filter, and then call that from the button here. So I'd say button has an action attached to it of change filter. Now, when you're 
just learning Swift UI. It's very common to write button actions and similar directly inside your views. And sometimes it's not really avoidable to avoid massive code bloat, as you'll see. But once you get onto a real project, it becomes much more useful and much more helpful uh, to spend extra time to just keep your code cleaned up. It makes your life easier in the long term, in the short term too. Just trust me, it's a good idea for code maintenance. Uh, I'm now going forward, we're in project 13 now, I'm gonna add more little cleanup tips like this to help you uh, do better coding as you go, just so you can feel confident your code's in good shape as you approach the end of the course.